Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and here on my channel I make crystal and geology videos. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe because I put out new videos every week. And in the month of December, I'm putting out new videos every single day. They're mostly gonna be shorts, but I am putting a lot of effort into them. I'm really prioritizing YouTube this month, so I would love it if you subscribe and stick around. I also have a cute cat named Oracle who likes to be in every single video. She just loves when I turn on the camera. It makes her just so clingy. I also have a crystal shop, Cosmic Geology. I just added new crystals to the shop recently on Black Friday, and I have another shop update coming in a couple weeks. So my shop and all my other links will be linked down below. Today's video is another crystal chat video where we do a deep dive into a specific rock or mineral and we talk about its geology and formation, how to tell if it's fake, metaphysical properties, and more. And today's crystal chat is about another gemstone. We recently talked about corundum and today we're going to be talking about beryl. Beryl is a beryllium aluminum silicate mineral that includes aquamarine, emerald, morganite, heliodor, and other varieties. Beryl is a cyclosilicate, meaning that the silicate tetrahedra that make up its crystal structure are arranged in rings. If you want to learn more about crystal structures, I have a video called Geology 101 for Crystal Lovers where we talk more about that. Aquamarine is beryl that is blue from iron impurities. Emerald is green beryl from chromium or vanadium impurities. Heliodor is yellow beryl from iron impurities. Morganite is peach or pink beryl that gets its color from iron or manganese impurities. Notice that iron is the impurity that gives both a blue color and a yellow color and a pink color. The same element can cause different colors in different minerals depending on the state of that element and how it interacts with the crystal structure. So iron is not going to always make minerals yellow or orange. Sometimes it'll make them blue. There's also a colorless variety of beryl called goshenite, but it has little use as a gemstone compared to its colorful counterparts. There is also a red variety of beryl called bixbite that gets its color from manganese. Red beryl is the most rare and it has only been found in a few locations. Meshish, I think that's how you pronounce it and I'm glad I looked it up because there was no way I was going to pronounce this word as meshish but meshish beryl is a type of blue beryl or aquamarine that is distinct from aquamarine because it has a darker color. The specific color is very important when classifying these gemstones. Emerald is the green variety of the mineral, but it must be a specific, very saturated blue-green emeraldy color in order to be classified as an emerald, otherwise it's just a green beryl. Heliodor is yellow beryl, but it must be a specific green tinted yellow, otherwise it's considered golden beryl. Beryl is often found in pegmatites, which are coarse grained igneous rocks that have the ability to grow really large crystals. Pegmatites are composed almost entirely of minerals that are one centimeter or more in diameter. Pegmatites are known to have very, very large crystals and gemstones. Beryl is often found in combination with other large minerals. It's often seen with tourmaline. These types of rocks can even produce crystals that are multiple meters long and weigh tons. Beryl can also form through metamorphism, where hydrothermal fluids interact with existing rocks and minerals and can transform them into new ones. With these hydrothermal solutions, beryl can also precipitate in cracks and crevices in other rocks. Beryls often have inclusions of other minerals such as hematite, micas, pyrite, rutile, garnet, quartz, tourmaline, or epidote. Beryl is a part of the hexagonal crystal system and usually forms long prismatic crystals. This hexagonal crystal system is really easy to spot in many raw specimens. Sometimes the crystal system is a little hard to tell just by looking at a raw piece or a raw crystal. I had such a hard time with this when I was learning about it in school, but beryl is one of the easier ones to tell. Beryl has a vitreous or glassy luster when polished. It is usually very translucent, which makes it a great gemstone. Beryl used to have more industrial uses in the past, but today it is most commonly used just as a gemstone. Beryl, especially the Heliodor variety, is often seen with etching. Etching is a naturally occurring carving on the surface of the stone, which can be caused by change in composition during forming or too much pressure. Beryl has a hardness level of 7.5 to 8 out of 10 on the most scale of hardness, but it does vary a little bit depending on the variety. Beryl contains the element beryllium, which is rare, therefore beryl does not form in abundance in many locations in the world. Emeralds can be found mostly in Colombia, which is known for some of the highest quality emeralds. Zambia, Brazil, Pakistan are also big suppliers to the market. They can also be found in Canada, Madagascar, Afghanistan, 
a little bit in the United States, Australia, and Russia. Aquamarine can be found in Brazil, which is known for having the Santa Maria Aquamarine, some of the highest quality and best color that there is. Pakistan, Austria, Nigeria, Zambia, Australia, Madagascar, Canada, China, Mozambique, Myanmar, Russia, and the US. Morganite is more rare than emerald and aquamarine and is only found in a couple locations. The majority of it is found in Brazil, but it can also be found in Madagascar, which is the original location it was found. Mozambique, Afghanistan, Namibia, and Russia. Bixbite is the rare red barrel, which is found almost entirely in the Wawa Mountains of Utah at the Ruby Violet Mine. The only other two locations it has been found is in New Mexico and Mexico. Since barrel's hardness ranges from 7.5 to 8 out of 10, it's pretty hard and durable and makes good jewelry. Although barrel does have a high hardness, it is brittle, which means it can break more easily along cleavage planes. Many emeralds have fractures within them, which can be filled in to make the stones more appealing and high quality for use in gemstones. Like I mentioned, barrel contains the element beryllium, which is actually very toxic to humans and is a known carcinogen, especially when inhaled. There is always such a wide variety of answers on if a certain mineral is toxic or dangerous to touch, with responses varying between it is so dangerous, it's radioactive, it's toxic, don't even touch it, you shouldn't buy this, to why in the world would you think a mineral could be dangerous? Barrel is perfectly safe to handle, it is perfectly safe to own, and it is even safe to be put in water. The beryllium in barrel is not water soluble, meaning it is not going to readily break down in water and release its elements, suddenly turning the water toxic. Just because a mineral contains a toxic or dangerous element, this doesn't immediately make the mineral dangerous by default. These elements are bonded together in the crystal structure. They're not just going to rub off or fall out onto your hands. Barrel is perfectly fine to get wet for a short period of time. A quick rinse isn't going to harm you, but extended exposure to water can cause the stone to be more fragile and break more easily. The most pressing issue when it comes to the safety of barrel is cutting and polishing it and potentially breathing in that crystal dust. That's when it really does become dangerous, but the same goes for any mineral. It is not safe to breathe in the dust or particles from any mineral. Even minerals that may seem harmless like quartz can be super dangerous. So make sure you're always being safe when cutting stones. Varieties of barrel may fade in the sun when left out for a long period of time, but this shouldn't pose an issue with regular wear and use. The exception to this is the Mishish dark blue barrel, which can easily fade to a lighter shade of blue when exposed to sunlight. Precious gemstones like emerald and aquamarine are classified by four main characteristics. The first is the cut. The cut of the gemstone can affect the price because some cuts require more of the raw stone to work with to make that shape. The next is clarity, and the higher the clarity, the more valuable the stone. The clarity refers to the purity of the stone and if it has any impurities, inclusions, or imperfections. The next characteristic is color. Color is one of the most important factors for determining the quality of a gemstone. For most gemstones, people want a vibrant and uniform color. Color is often changed and improved by heating the stone. This is common with aquamarine where it can be heated to remove any greenish hue that it may have and turn it a more vibrant, perfect blue color. Imperfections can even be filed down and unwanted inclusions within the stone can be dissolved away. The last characteristic is the carat, which is the weight of the gemstone. And the larger the carat, the higher the price will be, as long as it's good quality. If it's a very low quality stone and it's a large carat size, that doesn't really make it more valuable. For the rocks and minerals that we usually talk about on this channel, certifications of authenticity are usually a red flag. Anyone can just print up a certificate of authenticity for their stone to try and sell it, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's authentic. For example, if you try to buy a rose quartz and it comes with a certificate of authenticity, that would be a red flag for me because that is not standard on the market. There is no need for that. It is definitely not standard practice when it comes to regular rocks and minerals on the regular market. However, when it comes to precious gemstones like these, certifications are much more common and desired. Make sure that any certification that you're getting is from a reputable lab or institution such as the GIA. Uncertified gemstones aren't necessarily fake, but it's nice to have that certainty from a reputable place if you're going to be spending a lot of money on a stone or a piece of jewelry. Many gemstones, especially emeralds, are lab-grown. While lab-grown crystals are usually looked down upon on the regular market and people try to avoid them like the plague, lab-grown gemstones are very common and accepted. 
Growing these gems in a lab allows for lower prices because there's no mining involved and provides a controlled environment where there are no unwanted impurities or imperfections in the final stone. This also provides high quality gemstones without unethical labor practices being used or any damage done to the environment. These lab-grown stones are created from a seed of an original natural mineral and are still composed of all the same elements. Many times lab-grown gemstones can be indistinguishable from natural gemstones unless you know what you're looking for and usually it has to be inspected under a microscope. That's why it's good to get things certified so someone can check it out and see if you're getting something lab grown or something natural. Not all barrel is gem quality and super expensive. Emerald, aquamarine, and morganite can all be found in more standard quality, affordable, and accessible pieces. These lower quality pieces are typically more opaque and not translucent like gemstones would be. The color may not be as vibrant or optimal, or there's too many impurities or imperfections to make this a gem quality stone. But these are still very beautiful and great and fine to buy, they just didn't quite make the cut to be gemstones. In the last gemstone video about corundum, I talked about the largest rubies and sapphires that have ever been found. The largest rubies and sapphires ever found are relatively small compared to the size of barrel. The largest emerald ever found was 7,525 carats, and the largest aquamarine is over 10,000 carats. These two varieties of barrel get pretty large, especially compared to how small corundum usually is. I see large, huge, beautiful pieces of aquamarine on my Instagram every single day. As gemstones, emerald and aquamarine are two of my favorite ever. If I ever got married one day, which probably won't happen, I would love a ring to be emerald or aquamarine. And looking up pictures and researching for this video has really gotten me super interested in these two in particular. I used to be way more interested in gemstones when I was younger. I had a little book all about gemstones. I remember going to the field museum and there was a gemstone exhibit that I wanted to see, but I'm starting to get obsessed with real gemstones again. Especially aquamarine, I would love to get some beautiful raw large aquamarine specimens in my shop. I have my eye on a couple of suppliers, so if anyone out there is interested in purchasing like expensive nice aquamarine, let me know because one comment about it and I will order it. Usually on my channel, I talk about rocks and minerals, not fine, high quality gemstones. Gemstones are really a category of their own that require specific knowledge and expertise to determine if they're fake, lab grown, heat treated. Gemstones are not my specialty, so I cannot give a full comprehensive guide on how to tell if they're fake or not. Before purchasing anything, just make sure the price seems appropriate for what you're getting. If it seems too good to be true, then it probably is. Look out for low quality, cheap jewelry that may be dyed to enhance the color to make it look more high quality and desirable, or even a completely different low quality stone being dyed to look like a gemstone that it isn't. Sometimes this can be easy to spot when shopping in person, but sometimes it can be really tricky. Also, just be on the lookout for anything that seems comically large for a very cheap price. When we talked about corundum, there were some sapphires on eBay that were selling for like $100 that were larger than the largest sized sapphire ever found. So that just doesn't add up. And there were giant faceted rubies being sold for like under $100. So that just doesn't add up. I feel like I don't see fake aquamarine in emerald very often. Aquamarine seems pretty abundant. I see a lot of it all the time from very low, medium to high quality out there on the market. There doesn't seem to be a need to fake it. Now let's get into the metaphysical properties for some of these barrel varieties. First, let's start with Emerald, the birthstone for May. Emerald is associated with the heart chakra. Its energy radiates pure, unconditional love and increases compassion for yourself and others. Emerald's energy reminds us of the concept of eternity, which allows us to let go of our earthly fears and see the bigger picture. It helps us to release unnecessary attachments, fear, and any emotions that are holding us back. Emerald dissolves weaknesses and insecurity and helps to improve your confidence. Emerald helps to remove the shield that is protecting our heart or that we think is protecting our heart, but is actually holding us back from opening ourselves up and giving and receiving love. When this unnecessary shell is removed, we can open ourselves up and be fully authentic. Emerald supports regeneration, recovery, renewal, strength, and overall health. 
It helps to brighten up your energy and allow more joy into your life. Emerald carries an uplifting energy for when we feel weighed down, trapped in victimhood, or lost. Working with Emerald feels like a lightning of a heavy energy and a sigh of relief. Emerald helps us to heal heartbreak and overcome any negative situations we're dealing with. It helps us to get over judging ourselves and others and be more understanding. Emerald increases compassion, understanding, forgiveness, and reduces loneliness, allowing us to connect with other people. Working with Emerald can help us revive our passions, hobbies, and interests and connect with more people and our work. Next, we have Aquamarine, which is the birthstone for March. Aquamarine is associated with the throat chakra and opens up a clear energetic channel between the heart and the throat. This helps us to express ourselves and to communicate clearly. Aquamarine helps to resolve conflicts and allows us to cool down before speaking, preventing future arguments. Aquamarine helps to provide mental clarity and reduces brain fog. Having Aquamarine with us helps us to feel confident while public speaking. Aquamarine offers protection for traveling, protection against nightmares, and can be used as a good luck charm. Aquamarine helps to cleanse and purify our energy and the energy of our space. Working with Aquamarine helps to prevent our emotions from becoming overwhelming. Aquamarine helps to reduce judgment and can help bring about truth and closure. Aquamarine's energy encourages us to prioritize peace, calmness, quiet, Quiet and meditation. Aquamarine calms negative emotions like fear and anger. Aquamarine's energy works really well with heart chakra stones. Morganite is associated with the heart chakra, so these two, Aquamarine and Morganite, would be really good to have together. Morganite promotes healing, compassion, and unconditional love. It helps us to dissolve our ego and cleanses our heart space and aura. Morganite helps to provide comfort during difficult times. Morganite helps to provide comfort during difficult emotional times. Working with Morganite can promote inner peace and strength. Heliodor and Golden Barrel are associated with the solar plexus chakra. Heliodor's energy strongly boosts our personal power and brings light to any situation. Working with Heliodor can help to unlock the highest version of yourself. It helps to bring stability, optimism, and hope into your life. Heliodor helps to align us to our highest path. So that's everything I have for you today about Beryl. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new. If you did like the video, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more crystal and geology content from me every single day. My crystal shop cosmic geology will also be linked down below as well as all my other links. I recently added new crystals to my shop on Black Friday. They are the crystals that I unboxed in my recent unboxing video. A lot sold out pretty quickly but there's still some left so definitely check it out if you were interested in those crystals. I also have another shop update coming soon either at the end of this month or at the very beginning of the new year. I already had one little shipment come in. I have another one on the way. I'm so excited to do another unboxing video within the next couple of weeks for you, so stay tuned for that. And let me know any other crystals you'd like to see me get in my shop for future shop updates. I'm aiming for updates once a month. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.